Howdy, how's it going? My name's Davy Chappie, and I just finished watching The Witcher Netflix show, and I thought, you know what? People are probably dying to know my opinion about this, so this is a review channel now. Get used to it. If you haven't seen The Witcher yet, don't worry too much, because this is going to be a mostly spoiler-free review, but be aware that I do consider the first episode of a show to be fair game to talk about at length, because the first episode is supposed to be the introduction to the themes of the show, and dancing around it is more difficult than it's worth. And real quick, I'd like to give a shout-out to my new patrons this month. Eric F., Green Tiefling, Steve Allred, Arkham Ascended, Xiao Xiao Long, Come All Night! Thank you so much for pledging your money to me. If you pledge enough money, you might be able to fund a Dabby Chappie ASMR. But with that out of the way, let's talk about the story of The Witcher. So, the story's pretty simple. It follows a child princess on the run from a hostile nation after her kingdom is sacked, a young girl from an awful upbringing rising to become the most powerful sorceress, and Geralt of Rivia, a man whom no one should fuck with, and yet everybody does. I've never played the games or read the books, so I don't know if this is a faithful adaptation or not, but having just finished the last episode and keeping it fresh in my mind, the way that the show chooses to follow the three main characters is really creative, and while I won't spoil it for anybody here, it made keeping track of things that happened a lot more fun than just, oh hey, remember that cool scene? Come to think of it, The Witcher reminds me a lot of the new Mandalorian show that came out, if you've seen that, because it follows the same style of storytelling. Faceless Sexy Man comes into town, all the ladies wish that their name was town, and Faceless Sexy Man proceeds to solve whatever monster problem they're having, while also very briefly mentioning a troubled past, but mostly just staring into the middle distance. That's not bad, by any means. I love spaghetti westerns, even if this show is a lot more renaissance and a lot less ravioli. I just think that it's very interesting that they came out so close to each other while also using similar methods of delivering cool scenes. And speaking of cool scenes, holy hell, why is every scene so encapsulating to watch? Every time Geralt is on screen, I know something cool, if not overtly action-y, is gonna happen. They just frame the characters so well, and despite the big thing that they do to frame the plot being a historically complicated gimmick to pull off, it never gets so convoluted that it's impossible to follow. Alright, maybe the mage politics is balls, but that's like two minutes of the show, so who cares? So really, the majority of the entertainment just comes from watching Geralt go, mm, at things, and then get into an insanely well-choreographed fight. Going on to the characters, like I said before, in this show, you've got the princess, the witcher, and the sorceress, and they make up the majority of the cast, with each storyline being allotted one side character to act as a foil for the main one. And then there are dozens of ancillary characters just dancing around in the background to remind you what the plot of each episode is. In terms of character development, everybody goes through a pretty believable arc that sets them up pretty nicely for the next season, and when it comes to the actors themselves... <laughs> Uh, yeah, right. Uh, the cast is brilliant. Everybody is clearly giving it their all, the chemistry between the characters is crushingly believable, and even the pick for Dandelion turned out to be a ridiculously fitting choice for the part. I'm taken away by the amount of power everyone brought to the table. Props to the casting director. Weirdly though, when it comes to villains, nobody really has one. Sure, there's a main antagonistic force in each episode, and it can be argued that a main villain does start to show up near the end of the series, but for the majority of the show, it's really just a man versus world story tackled in three different ways along three different plot lines. This means that all of the focus is spent on the character and how they face the hurdles of the challenges that they're faced with, and it never really stops being entertaining to watch. And speaking of watching, holy fuck, this show smacks. Like, it smacks everybody. The costuming is fantastic, the landscaping is great, the action is some of the best choreographed fights I've seen since my incorrect memory of Star Wars Episode Eight's fight scene, and considering this is a first season Netflix show, the special effects are dope. The monsters can be a little silly with how much CG goes into them, but I do have to commend the designers because whenever a monster has to give off an expression other than good old monster constipation, I can easily tell tell how they're feeling. Of the visuals, my only really big irk is that they seem to have rehired the dragon from Merlin, and that guy still looks like he's been smoking more than just peasants. But besides that, every inch of this show is just oozing power and charm, and you can bet your sweet looty ass that I'ma be adding Jaskier's clothing collection to my wardrobe. Overall, watching The Witcher was like eating a cheesecake. It's delicious, it's moist, it's creamy, it's slowing down my work ethic, I know it's not good to eat four slices at once, but by golly, this cheesecake is jacked and I want it! I definitely recommend this show to any fantasy enthusiast looking for a new Lord of the Rings, as well as anybody who's just interested in a Lone Ranger style adventure series. With all that said, I am giving The Witcher a 6 out of 10. The show is brilliant, and very few things will top it. But that'll about do it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell, toss a coin to your Witcher, and maybe support me on Patreon so that I can afford a cover of that song in the future. But yeah, Davy out.